Today's episode of Wikisift is brought to you by Naked Hitler Pizza and Wings. Please, please let us change our name. We now have 34 locations in six countries, including one in Italy. Italy. Let me know when we go live because I have things waiting to be heard by the audience. Woohoo! I'm excited. Let's go. Rock and roll, boys. Uh. <laughs> I, to, Tom's uh, is so palpable now. <laughs> some some days that is just the hit I need. Just hearing a little bit of Tom's hope and optimism leaving him never to return. When Mike says, I have something I want to tell you guys, I know it's good news. When Steve says, I have something I want to tell you guys, it's always bad news. <laughs> okay, where is this always coming from? I, I would say at least 60% of the time I show up with something that is meritous of the buildup. Well, most tonight. of the time, it's like, hey, I'm going to interrupt Tom. It's going to be great. In, in the way that a toddler is proud of the largest poop of their life, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> but like, in that you did it and no one, you were not harmed in its genesis, but everyone else might be. Well, OK, that also yeah, you're giving too much credit to the toddler for the maliciousness of making a big poop there. That that's one, buddy. <laughs> no, no, number dos. Um, yeah, yeah. That Go child ahead. is only going to be that proud if they know that the parents don't have wipes or spare diapers and are in a very inconvenient spot when this occurs. Also, uh, I pinged the chat so that whenever we need to get back to the dock, it is there. But I have a feeling zero is going to be like, I'm confused. Should I be on tonight? <laughs> this has nothing to do with the thought that I initially wanted to start with Tom, which was I wanted to propose a Stevo's opening segment, but we all know that we'll never have any consistency. So this is Stevo's opening tangent. Yeah, that's usually the consistency I figure we go with. It's the same effect as watching a pile of glass get rolled down a hill. It's so gonna, I, it, its path is unpredictable, and it's a problem for everyone. I, like many of you, do enjoy a carbonated sugary beverage from time to time, but I've been looking to cut back because I've gained a significant amount of weight. My mm. local Wegmans has started offering something called Wonder Pop, which is, oh, no. according to my spouse, I wonder kombucha for people who don't like drinking loogies. I wonder, <laughs> is it pop? <laughs> it sounds like. So, like, it advertises, it's like nine grams of dietary fiber, five oh. grams of sugar. And you know there what? Are a... Just, why do you, why? Just drink fucking water like a normal human <laughs> being. Just, so just do I, that. I, I got a few to try. I got the lemon lime, I got the oh, cream God. soda, I got the root beer, and I got the cola. You know what's going to figured... happen with this shit, right? No, no, you don't know what's going to happen with this. Oh, I know I what's going to happen with this. Oh, G I know. Give, give me two minutes and you'll be third bend on the roller coaster. And <laughs> the seatbelts will be gone. I don't want to be. I don't like this roller coaster. I don't like roller coasters in general. I'm a tall man and I wear glasses. It's a bad time when I go down real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Evolution's a learning tool. I, I need somebody to superimpose my face over Jerry Seinfeld. This is the opening monologue. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Mike had a bad experience with a seagull. I feel like <laughs> I feel like it wouldn't even be a subtle superimpose. Like you'd spin into place right on his skull and be like, eh. it, "It's it's Bruce Lee's face from Game of Death after he died." Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, so the cardboard so, that they stuck on the yes, one hundred percent. That's exactly what I want. Do it. So anyways, I get a few to try. I figure cola being the most artificial flavor amongst them yeah. is most likely mm. to be good. Yeah. It's already chemical. It's hard to fuck up a chemical flavor. You want to bet? You bet. <laughs> so. I already know where this is going. I, I had a sip and a half and told Val, I'll live. I had another <laughs> sip and poured the rest of the can down the sink. <laughs> I didn't learn my lesson, so I tried the Try root it a beer. second time, yeah. Root beer. Mm -hmm. I'm amazed. I'm <laughs> stunned. I didn't vehemently hate it. I drank the whole thing and, and then, then immediately <laughs> went for a regular goddamn soda because that's what I wanted. <laughs> 
<laughs> so my point being, don't experiment with the status quo. All you're doing is wasting money. Yeah. How did I know? How the fuck did I know? How did I know it was going to be cola root beer and you wouldn't make it through to cherry? And I guarantee you, Steve-O, the cherry is going to be the worst. Oh, no, the, the other two were cream soda and lemon lime. There's no cherry. OK, fine. Sorry. There's usually a cherry flavor. Mm -hmm. okay. The lemon lime was almost unpalatable. The cream soda was fine. <laughs> So basically, as long as what you're drinking is something that you would get from the 1920s to the 1950s from a five cent vending machine, you're good. I eagerly await the lemon heads flavor. Oh, it's oh not, I'm very good as a track. It. Otherwise, this is the arc of every every fucking spontaneously made drink. You will try one. You will try two, maybe three. There will always be one last one left at the back of your fridge for eternity to be found by a fool in an emergency. It won't I, be you. <laughs> thanks for else. reminding me. Uh, my spouse has been on me to throw away a can of Jigglypuff water that I yep. literally got at Con Bravo where uh -huh. I met Tom White for the first time. Con Bravo hasn't existed for six years. That drink is cursed. Yes, and this cola has been out of date for eight. <laughs> it's, it's literally in my sunroom in what should be a display case for various liquors. I assure you, this thing has gone from below 32 degrees Fahrenheit <laughs> up to 100 at least 50 dozen times. <laughs> this, thing, this thing is no longer. <laughs> I plan on mailing this to Ashens eventually. <laughs> Why? Do you want to assassinate him? He'll go out doing what he loved. <laughs> he don't love it. I've seen his latest <laughs> so videos. Why? Okay. All right. I agree with Tom now. I'm going too far. Okay. <laughs> right. I, I need to get us on track because otherwise I'm going to have to leave in 12 minutes of pop discussion because it will be too important <laughs> to what we've been discussing. See, Tom has learned a lesson here. Mm. Don't don't leave us alone unattended. Also, this is your reminder to describe the images. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tom. Tom, describe the images. I will. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. I did ask you guys to remind yes, me of that. And I already forgot. Yes, you did. That, that was a mistake. Even as you reminded me, I forgot the, what you were talking about. So. Oh, you know this. You know, this request you have made of us will come back to haunt you through. Hi, the I'm Tom White. Podcast. Welcome to Wikisift, a willfully ignorant dive into fan pop culture. Something, something, something <laughs> brought to you by Hitler Pizza. Now, I could look up how many Magic the Gathering com legendary commanders are out there, but I know there's over 2000 and the lowest one is for some reason not Phage, despite the fact that she's terrible. <laughs> I'm tempted to just let that be the intro. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're more than tempted. Yeah. You see, in Magic the Gathering, which I've recently fallen back into, I'm done. I'm not going to do think this is a fucking Magic the Gathering fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today we're continuing our dumb Batman and Spider-Man villain bracket tournament. Huzzah! And I swear, if one of you fuckers announces you have double cancer, just do one up me! <laughs> So, hang on, is double cancer just more aggressive cancer, or is it just cancer in two different areas? <laughs> no, it's just cancer, it's just two different kinds. Wouldn't it be the worst if you had cancer on one side of the same, like, altitude on your this body? This is turning into a really depressing <laughs> I, bingo idea, Mike. We need to stop. We should, I'm sorry. We should stop. <laughs> Uh, Wiki Sift is a willfully ignorant fandom podcast where we don't actually directly consume media and just read what fans wrote about online. Because I could place train sim. <laughs> <laughs> I also I like this. how he puts an effort after the Wiki Sift is willfully ignorant, as if that's anything more that people need to hear. Because I could play the Fallout games to find out which vault is the one with all the women in it, or I could look up on the wiki that it's Vault sixty nine. <laughs> nice. Uh I could look up what the lowest Metacritic rated Simpsons game is. It's Simpsons Wrestling for PlayStation 1. That I could look up the most uh, critically panned <laughs> episode of Transformers. <laughs> but it's easier to look up online than it's the woman who loved Power Glide. And the best part but is Tom can't look at the chat and have them say whether or not they like this. But today specifically, <laughs> we're continuing our terrible Batman and Spider-Man <laughs> villain tournament bracket. Okay, yeah! so... A few things have changed since the first episode, uh, okay. mostly because 
Mike pointed out a whole bunch of characters that I missed and I had to change some things around. And I also decided you guys are totally right that Penny Ponderer should not be a uh, honorable mention. He needs to be in the bracket. So I moved a few things around. Okay. So Give us the link. I, oh, I'm, I'm trying yeah, to I find where link. this list is and I scroll up in our little wiki sifters chat. And the most recent document is linked from Zero that just says, Young Sheldon in the biggest bang of all. I'm pretty mm. sure that's not what I'm looking for. Okay, I just pasted it into the thing. Thank you. And I'm telling Ian that he can go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up okay, for this. So, so I'm going to start with um, an honorable mention we didn't do last time, and that's Pigeon Person. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I need to guess who he is before you tell me who he belongs to. And I'm gonna okay, guess he's Well, Peters. you're already you're already wrong about one thing. <laughs> what? that the Statue of Liberty? Mostly the pronouns. Damn it, I was wrong! I was wrong! It wasn't Peters, it was Batman's Ah, oh, that was foolish of me. Mm. I thought it was gonna be a straight, it was a hook. <laughs> okay, so Pigeon Person uh, is a, <laughs> a woman with large wings. Which look I'm more glad like... you said wings. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love don't know the what... fact that that Robin gets this shows just how much we dunked on Robin at a period of time in pop culture because he's like, holy cow, pigeon woman will clip your wings. It's pigeon person, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? I may be stealing the Statue of Liberty in this photo, which Tom is not describing. I may but I'm be trying to describe it. <laughs> <laughs> she she has large wings that are kind of like angel wings but like twice as long and she's wearing like a red uh, we, can you call that a dress i and, I'd call that a one i'd call that a one piece like with a like a really high riding bottom also yeah. i can't tell if those are supposed to be feathers on her arms or really bad tribal tattoos i would say feathers or at least some kind of weird silver <laughs> armor that she's wearing also i've been told that's a tunic by several people at a ren fair but they call it i'm gonna say feather printed sleeves mm. so Batman and Robin are looking on as if encouraging the Statue of Liberty to eat a bowl of cereal, while the Statue of Liberty is being taken away by a conspicuous circle of birds. The best... Here's, here's the thing. funny thing. Okay. I think Mike's about to say the same thing I am, but... Well, here's my question. If, they're, if those feathers are not printed on that outfit, that means this woman glued them on, <laughs> and that took a significant margin of time. That is very likely. That was the point I was going to make before we lost it. It also took a significant number of life birds losing feathers. So, yeah. okay, now here's the thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Lift my statue or you become my outfit, you fools. What we are looking at is actually a Hostess Cupcake ad. Good, of course. I'm hungry. <laughs> I would not have included her if not for the fact that they later made her part of Spider-Man canon. I think she is Spider -Man the only... Spider-Man canon? Yes. Oh, Batman canon, my bad. I was going to say! Did a lot of, they did a lot of Marvel comics, too. So Okay. Uh, it's just, it's it's wild to me that Batman and Robin staged the events that eventually made Deus Ex happen. <laughs> 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 fucking Statue of Liberty. <laughs> I, I, love the, I love the moxie on this in that uh, you'll never stop me. We'll see. Dude, she's already done it. What is your bad <laughs> anti steal the Statue of Liberty spray for this? Exactly. That, okay, successful. In the hostess ad, she stole a bunch of statues for some reason and was stopped when Batman airdropped hostess cupcakes and her trained pigeons went after them instead of lifting Mount Rushmore as planned. Okay, but so she's not a supervillain, she's just a mediocre bird trainer. You see, when you empower the slaves, you see this is the means of production. That's just how it goes. I mean, we already had Birdmaster, and that was like the same thing, so. Man, people have really high estimation of birds thanks to Alfred Hitchcock. I think if, <laughs> I, think if I had a time machine, this is what I would I, waste it on. Bold of you to assume it was Hitchcock, that hack, and not Birdemic, the cinematic opus that it is. Well, this is this is Earth One Batman from like the age. This is before Bird Birdemic taught me to fear two things: birds and shitting in a field. <laughs> but like, would you do you think Alfred Hitchcock, after making Birds, had he seen this comic go, "What have I done"? <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Like Dr. fucking Frankenstein? <laughs> this is Hitchhawks. I have become dead. <laughs> Pretty soon they'll be asking for the right to vote. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Why did I scroll down and we have sad pigeon? Okay, person? we have no, that's so not, that's many not to go person. through, guys. <laughs> that, okay, that's, that's just pigeon now. <laughs> yeah, so they they gave her like an edgy early two thousands reboot, and now she's yeah, just pigeon. Definitely the like cover of some Evanescence fan art going yeah. on right here. I I I truly believe she entirely exists for the male lead to kind of comfort. Which is like, yeah, yeah, I love, yeah, I have feelings for you, pigeon. And then you just smell and you're like, ooh. When did this retold version come out? Should we make the assumption that it predates the Mike Tyson mysteries? Because pigeon, this kind of sexy, edgy, like teen you'd see at Hot Topic, and pigeon, the actual pigeon voiced by Norm MacDonald, have the exact same name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading her powers and now I'm shutting up so Tom can get this to them because I read a word that in no way belongs to the description <laughs> of everything we've got. <laughs> yes. got <it. laughs> okay, Mike, would you care to uh, read this? Sure. Pigeon was a criminal who stole a defaced statues in Gotham City. You know what? It's Gotham. It's not the worst thing that's happened there. Joker fucking gasses enough people. History. She was defeated by Batman and Robin. That's it. There's nothing else. I like how that's all it says about her criminal career. She was defeated by Batman and Robin. Powers. Alien physiology. Pigeon is a god killer. Hold up, what? <laughs> a race of beings created by the universe as a form of antibodies against the gods. Which means that this woman... I, I feel like this is a dig at, what's her name? Uh, Squirrel Girl or whatever? Yeah. Could be. Powers include wings, which allows her to fly, claws, energy absorption. As a god killer, Pigeon can devour the souls of divine beings and other people. Energy projection. Pigeon can project blasts of energy powerful enough to tear a hole in Lord Chandraka's chest. But don't, okay, it's not that big of a deal. He's a 92-year-old doctor from two blocks over. <laughs> Fair enough. Abilities, animal training, mechanical <laughs> aptitude. <laughs> he has one of those lobbies that perpetually smells like bad cabbage. Oh, man. And then down there is Boomerang, God's second greatest disaster after Deadpool. Oh, no. Oh, fuck boomerang that's that's just a superhero version of what's his face chris klein from uh rollerball well the thing is boomerang actually is a dude who's had some weird amount of legs in fucking spider-man's comics but he's yeah. kind of been the guy who sits on peter's couch and frequently peter has to bail him out as uh, as spider-man go like, could you please stop doing crimes can't hear you i'm awesome he's not awesome he's awful a boomerang not to be confused with Captain Boomerang, the Flash villain member of Suicide Squad. Um, he's got like a white and dark blue jumpsuit with a boomerang shaped visor. And he's got white boomerangs on his shoulders and behind his back. Like, yeah, just everywhere. And a broken double dragon amulet on his belt. He kind of <laughs> looks like a rent-a-hero. That is a morpher, isn't it? It is a morpher. <laughs> Hen Shin! The, the, the reason why I like Boomerang is because there was a really hilarious comic where Boomerang takes Peter out drinking and they enter a trivia contest about Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> which, which Peter resoundingly wins. And that is okay. the peak. Yeah. Fred Myers was born in Australia, but moved to America when he was a small child. In America, his great love was baseball and he developed an extraordinary pitching arm. He became a professional baseball player in the minor leagues after graduating high school and a few years later entered the major leagues. <laughs> His knee was hit with a lead pipe by two <laughs> unidentified people. Ice skaters. <laughs> <laughs> Within a year, he was suspended for accepting bribes. Embittered, he was eventually... Well, I mean, did you accept the fucking bribes? Yeah, of course he did. Are you upset because you were framed or are you upset because you got caught? Fred, Fred has a lot of problems, and <laughs> this, as someone who's read comics with him in him, none of this surprises me. This is the <laughs> kind of guy whose shit is his own fault. <laughs> he was eventually contracted by the subversive criminal organization, the Secret Empire, and offered employment. Gosh, that sounds like a Nickelodeon show. So, yeah, so according to his origin, he doesn't have any special ability to use boomerangs. Nope. The only reason he uses boomerangs is because he's from Australia. And so the yeah. secret empire gave him boomerangs to throw. <laughs> and canonically, that is the explanation. Yep. 
<laughs> Why do you call yourself Boomerang? Because you can't keep me down. Also, people don't know how to fucking use me usually. <laughs> um, have you guys seen like the suit, uh, the Harley Quinn uh, cartoon with Kite Man in it? Nope. Uh, right. I've seen a, like a clip or two. Have you seen Kite Man? Because he's basic. He's basically no. Kite Man okay. in that show. Okay, uh, Mike, we're we're gonna do Kite Man later. So okay, sorry. <laughs> uh. Boomerang is a longtime recurring villain, not just for Spider Man, but has fought Hulk, Iron Fist, Nick Fury, Shanghai, Black <laughs> Widow, Beef with Broccoli, Hawkeye, Daredevil, and others. So yeah, they keep bringing this guy back. <laughs> yeah, he's the fucking Boomerang. Yeah, he doesn't stop. He really the only doesn't. way to stop him is to shoot him. <laughs> oh, wait, shit. Did I just give away his secret weakness? <laughs> <laughs> he's been shot and he's been on the king. Please Prince. don't hate me, Boomerang. I'm sorry. Oh, he's been shot a lot. Oh, yeah. I mm, Tom, you didn't warn me. I should put this in a private tab. <laughs> See, mine is All already. Right. <laughs> Am I doing this one? Uh, okay, you can do this. White one. Rabbit, parentheses, not the strip club. White Rabbit, yes, this is a different White Rabbit. So both Spider Man and Batman have a lane supervillain called White Rabbit. So what is White Rabbit? I would not call, okay, as somebody can who I describe is, her? Th there is no way that outfit, that body is lame. That is, no, <laughs> no. It makes me feel other things. We'll wait until you read the description. So she is wearing rabbit ears. She's also, for yes. some reason, wearing a purple mask and has long cascading silver hair. So we, we're not sure this isn't just Felicia Hardy in a new And game. has at least either a bunny tail thong or a butt plug bunny. <laughs> not real. We can't really find out from the same. No, we can't. This is. <laughs> she is wearing uh, four, uh, long ass gloves, long ass boots. Uh, clearly a bodice of some kind and is doing a collar attached to the bodice assembly and a purple thong. Goodness, those are some tig old bitties. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they are front and center, literally smack dab in the middle of the image. <laughs> there the show. woman yells at this woman and says, I'm sorry, it's too much. <laughs> anyway, Jaina Hudson, a.k.a. White Rabbit, is an <laughs> Alice in Wonderland themed enemy of Batman, who is an Indian... Social wait what? Yeah, hold up. Keep, what? Just read. What? With we'll superpower get... to duplicate herself as an albino criminal. What? What? Mm -hmm. what? Hold up, hold up. So, so the Indian woman down below that I'm looking at, which is just an Indian, a very attractive Indian woman in a yeah. white outfit with the stereotypical Indian earrings uh... that I'm seeing. When she copies herself, they come out as a white woman. Do I yes. hearing that right? Oh, this art is too new. This art is too new for this to be a thing. Yeah. What? Comics are broken, man. <laughs> Comics are fucking broken. But she is an Indian socialite with the superpower to duplicate herself as an albino criminal who has enhanced speed and dresses like a Playboy bunny. Someone came up with this and said, you know, it's a perfect villain, <laughs> a villain who doesn't look like herself when she commits crime. And they I mean... ran too hard with it. <laughs> Powers. My superpower is whitewashing. Mm. Yeah. Biofission. Like, oh, fuck me. God, that's just not God. I'm not asking that of the lady in the bunny outfit. I'm just commenting. Look, if it's going to be something like this, at least it doesn't seem to be overtly problematic in its portrayal. Yeah. Biofission. Although its exact nature remains unknown, <laughs> Jaina can duplicate herself into two beings, a second version of herself and White Rabbit. This power causes some physical changes in White Rabbit, such as her skin tone getting lighter and her hair becoming white. Once this duplication takes place, Jane and White Rabbit can become completely separate individuals with their own personalities and opinions. Oh, good. It's just for the threesome fodder. She's later shown <laughs> speaking to Jane. They are rigging Jane... the election. She gets two votes. Yeah. <laughs> She's later shown speaking to Jane Hudson. It's real that Jane Hudson and the White Rabbit are the same person, and she can be in two places at once. Oh, there's. <laughs> Again, there's I will a lot. say this is. We seems... could just have a rabbit slut. Is that, <laughs> is that too much? We couldn't just have a rabbit like, slut wearing a white wig? Just. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Okay, we survived that one. <laughs> we move on. Okay, the next oh. one is Brand. Tom, you do this one. All right, so what we got here is uh, a panel from the comic. Brand is wearing like a green flannel shirt with a cowboy hat, a yellow neck kerchief that's covering his face, <laughs> a big letter B in his chest. 
<laughs> like he's wearing cowboy chaps and uh, six shooters, and he's riding a motorcycle. <laughs> uh, I'm not laughing at that. I'm laughing because I know what's coming later, and oh, I'm happy. I, okay, I'm, so, I'm laughing because this guy's clearly in the style of a cowboy brand, but I'm imagining the crab saying, silence, bread. <laughs> yeah. So the brand was a Gotham City criminal costumed as a masked Western bandit. <laughs> Timothy mm -hmm. Brand Robinson, you take off that necker chip, <laughs> put that bike back and come inside to do your homework, young man. Now, Mom, now, Mom I want to fucking be a varmint. You're from <laughs> Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a new villain costumed as a masked Western bandit calls himself the brand and announces his presence to Batman by firing a hot branding iron arrow into the door of the GCPD <laughs> headquarters <laughs> as it? Batman and Robin are entering the building. I'm intimidating because I have a moped. He informs <laughs> Batman from a rooftop that he intends to leave clues and brands to his forthcoming crimes and challenges him <laughs> and Robin to capture him, then leaves. I just, could you imagine being the guy on desk duty at the GCPD? And he just says, Jesus fucking Christ, what now? A hot brand iron? Fuck I will leave city. clues in future brands, provided you can put the fire out soon enough. Timothy Robinson was arrested for three acts of arson today in Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, man. You know what? This is why Batman's rogue gallery is so fucking interesting. When you bat a million balls, inevitably something's going to be good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So he's the Riddler, but instead of riddles, he leaves clues with a branding iron. That's his whole was thing. Was just a dude being a cowboy and shooting people too much for Batman? <laughs> yes. <laughs> was, I would like to that... describe this image as eloquently as I can, by the way. It's a cowboy hat with a yellow bandana over most of the face, a la the shadow. The most disgusting green plaid with a big B circle right in the center. An extremely flatulent red motorcycle with a single <laughs> headlight and Batman being distracted by doing a dance <laughs> to chase after Bran. Here's the thing. This guy could have really bumped up to the S rank of Batman villains by just wearing a normal fucking duster. Ditch the B and Batman going, tell me who you are. And Bran going, no, shooting him and walking away. And Batman going, damn, this guy's good. And he would be so up the list. Like, I could see this. This villain would be intimidating if they branded people and left them for <laughs> yeah. clues for Batman. Yeah. That would be terrifying. Yeah. Or he after he killed people, he branded them with like a hot and not even like it was a brand from the gun. Right. Like mm -hmm. he would shoot. The gun would get hot. He'd brand the circle on him and he'd walk Ooh. away. Right. And they yeah, call him brand. Good. And see, they, but I like, like the idea of him branding people and leaving them, them alive and having Batman being forced to put people through even more trauma just to figure out who the villain is. That yeah. is a brilliant villain. Mm -hmm. I should well, write so for these. You should. Stan Lee's corpse, come find me. Instead, he hurls branding irons into doors. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just picked the wrong item. He missed. He meant yeah. to hit Batman in his square buttocks. <laughs> he, he was trying to hit a person, but he keeps missing and hitting doors. <laughs> brand has two superpowers, the ability to brand things and the accuracy of a stormtrooper. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next... <laughs> Oh, oh Grasshopper boy. Gang. Mike, you want to do this one? Sure. Uh, only because I'm a common Rider fan. The Grasshopper Gang was a criminal <laughs> organ team founded by a couple of twin brothers who wore Grasshopper disguises. Well, he says disguise, but I don't think they were wearing one disguise, Tom, to avoid detection. So That's what it says in the wiki. I just copied and pasted. Okay. So we have Batman in a very compromising position. Uh, dominating one man in a power pose who's on the ground in a grasshopper outfit. Now, you might be thinking when I say <laughs> grasshopper outfit, this is an outfit with a grasshopper mask. And that's where you're wrong, dear reader. This, this is, is very much like um, an interpretive outfit. Arthur from The Tick. Yeah, yeah, he looks very much like Arthur. But but it's green and he has uh, ankle bracers for some reason. But Batman has <laughs> asserted strength over one brother by Go mounting on. him. <laughs> and has punched another with the word gawunk because his gawunk. intimacy will not be denied. Like, it looks like he punched him in the throat, which is pretty baller for a, a comic this old. This is like... How? 
how are, how is, is it that all of these people are so physically fit? Is that the superpower <laughs> of the DC universe? Anyway, on their first exploits, hmm, the brothers pretend to be one of the cri- to be one criminal. Oh God, not another one. Uh, as the Grasshopper, who was confronted by Batman and Robin, the Grasshopper's plan was to steal valuable objects from Batman, and so they managed to steal the Batmobile, the Batboat, a single Batarang, and they yes. even managed to kidnap Robin <laughs> and warn <laughs> Batman into trap. Oh man, that's a I do threat. like how it ended on that one. Like that's the most <laughs> interesting one. They stole the Batmobile and the Bat Boat, but also a single battery. <laughs> you can only carry one. There's oh, only no. two of them. You 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 missed this. So usually these things are listed in descending order of importance. So yeah. monetary value, greatest to least, Batman, Bat Boat, a single batarang, and then Robin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, can, I can always find more orphans it's like negative money that's right orphans are free <laughs> no orphans cost negative money it's like it's amazing <laughs> we're the bad guys from the rescuers however batman outsmarted them and learned the grasshopper was in fact two people the grasshopper <laughs> gang were in charge of delivering the final threat of the outsider to batman and robin but they were utterly defeated by the dynamic duo, despite this time being three members of the team. <laughs> what, do they have another brother? <laughs> they, I Charles like how they, they're from... very, very slowly growing, but they're, they cap out at three. <laughs> the third one was supposed to be there the first time, but couldn't get somebody to cover his third key shift <laughs> at uh, Suncoast Video. <laughs> They're growing at the rate of a normal family. <laughs> so they're just waiting, going, Mom, we need to beat Batman. We did so well the first time. If we have more of us, make so another what? brother. <laughs> make another brother. <laughs> yeah, I like just, the just fact that like like they, they brand themselves as the grasshopper, like it's one villain. And his superpower is just that there's three of him. <laughs> Mom, Ooh. get off your ass and start contributing to this family. <laughs> Mom, but we stole the Batmobile. Do you know how often that happens? <laughs> I'm, I'm some reason I'm hearing the voice of one of the guys from Venture Brothers. Uh, oh yeah, I can't, can't remember which one, but it feels like those two guys, <laughs> the the henchmen. I, I will give one minor comparison. There is a, a spaghetti western comedy that I really enjoy called Alive or Preferably Dead. And at one point in the movie, a plot point is two brothers basically kidnap a really ditzy um, but attractive woman who's the daughter of a rich industrialist. And the rich industrialist literally could not be happier that somebody else is taking care of his daughter for him. So he starts paying the kidnappers. I feel like that should happen here with Robin and Batman. (laughs) All right. All right. What Robin got kidnapped? All right. How much do they want an hour? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, they can have fridge privileges. So next we have King of the Cats. Oh boy, this one's mine. (laughs) This guy looks like a sex pest. (laughs) (laughs) The sleaziest thin mustache you can imagine from a 1910 supervillain tying the damsel to the railroad tracks but wearing catwoman's outfit i feel like this is just gomez adams on a bad trip <laughs> like i took something very hard old man and quite frankly i'm here to cause problems for everyone else <laughs> robin Rawr, batman Rawr. Bad me old to man. Introduce his grin myself. isn't helping either <laughs> i am the master of the cat kingdom the king of the cats <laughs> If you would like to rescue one of them, please fill out this form. <laughs> so read the description. Because, I'm ooh getting boy. to it, Tom. Carl Kyle. Bro- oh, brother of Selena Kyle. Okay, that kind of makes sense. The self-proclaimed oh. king of the cats. What a great swing band. <laughs> Inspired by his sister's infamy to become a costumed criminal, he created a skin tight. That's supposed to be purple? That is literally just black! No, no, it's dark purple. (laughs) Dark purple. I will highlight it with the dropper tool, and it will come up all the same character. It's black! Why you gotta see color? (laughs) Cat suit for himself. This is OLED black! This is black hole black! This isn't... I'm from Maryland, home of the Ravens. 
purple. <laughs> this is this is what breaks Steve. <laughs> this is the kind of black that you cannot purchase if you're <laughs> if you're not a niche Kapoor. This is the kind of black that actively detracts Adam from the universe. <sighs> what is the guy's name? Anish Kapoor. Anish Kapoor, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Anish Kapoor, the guy who's uh, bought out the rights to Vanta Black. Oh, Stuart shit, Semple really? Hit- yeah. Mm-hmm. God, everyone hates Anish Kapoor. He's the guy who made the bean in Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the dude is chronically considered a fucking problem in there. <laughs> he created a black paint he didn't create it is... he bought the rights to it oh he wow. didn't make it it was scientifically made and he said cool i have money gimme oh my gosh an actual wiki sift topic on wiki sift yeah. yeah so so he yeah he he tried to license this color so people would have to pay him to use it so this other artist Stuart uh, simple yeah Stuart simple he <laughs> he created his own uh version of black that was like very very close to this black and, and not he, toxic to use. Yeah, and he made it available to whoever wants it, except as as. Anish Kapoor. You have to promise, if you buy it, you have to promise not to be Anish Kapoor or buying it on his behalf. Yeah. <laughs> That's his one term. He, Stuart that, Sample, I love. He's got that rogue fucking psychopath. Um, That's lovely. Way about him. He's, and he's anyways, a Robin it, Hood. Of, <laughs> he's a Robin it's Hood. not he's fucking just, purple. Carl established many of these innovations first, such as the, the Steve, I don't car? mean to ruin your life, but my wife literally is an artist and did the gamma check on it, and it is in fact purple. Oh. You're, there is no if that's purple, oh. somebody buy me a new monitor. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very that is black, purple. Th- this is the dress that broke the internet. That is black and gray. <laughs> <laughs> she said it's she did the check, it's purple. <laughs> You know what? That I described it. Go out and look for yourselves, please. Somebody, somebody, tell me that I'm not going insane. We also still haven't gotten into the face off yet of the new brand. What is the kitty car? All right, Spider Mugger. Okay, hold on. We haven't even finished no, reading the finished. description. No, I haven't I would like to know what the kitty car is, please. It's, I'm assuming it is just the Batmobile, but for the splendid example of a man. Did we actually read that part out loud? We can. Carl established many of these innovations first, such as the kitty car that his sister Selena would go on to imitate. So this guy decided, I'm not going to be Catwoman. I'm the king of cats. And then his sister went and said, nah, fuck you, bitch. I'm taking everything. Ooh, that's a nice cat car. I like the idea that that Catwoman actually ripped something off of this guy. (laughs) I was the original. I hate my sister. Okay, so next we've got the Spider Mugger. Yeah. He's a very <laughs> one note villain who I think only appears in like one comic. His whole thing is that he just mugs people while wearing a Spider Man mask. He's, here's the worst part he's clearly wearing a glove and has a gun. So he's <laughs> not even doing it right. And there's pe- I, it's, I almost feel like with the photo, the reflection of the dude in his glasses yeah. and his like optics, he's like, You're not Spider Man. Spider Man doesn't wear leather gloves. Shut up, I am. Dude, are you okay? <laughs> no, I'm having a really hard time. My parents are getting divorced. He doesn't wear the costume. He just wears the mask. So he's yeah, like, so it's not even Spider-Man. It's some asshole with a mask. It's spider head. <laughs> um, Sean Boyle wore a Spider-Man mask while mugging and so came to be nicknamed the Spider Mugger. After mugging Peter Parker, he discovered <laughs> Spider-Man's web shooters. A Boyle deduced that the victim was Spider-Man. Um, Boyle had surrendered the credit cards he stole to an employer and was killed when attempting to retrieve Parker's to learn the identity and home address of Spider-Man. Uh, the way this is written is confusing, but basically it okay, is so very he stole, confusing. Yeah, he stole Spider-Man's wallet. And then mm-hmm. um, afterwards, when he turned over his his go- goods to his employer, he he noticed that one of the things he stole from Peter Parker was the web shooters. And he's like, oh, crap, that was Spider-Man. I need to go back and get that wallet back because now I can find out who Spider-Man's secret identity is. Mm-hmm. And uh, the employer didn't like him trying to steal back the wallet and killed him. Th- this is why I don't like middle management. <laughs> I've never liked middle management. Especially people who will micromanage and kill you if you fuck up. 
This is the kind of thing that brings down criminals. So his body was then dumped in an alley where Spider-Man discovered him and was accused by police officers of having killed him. <sighs> wow, so his whole special ability is getting shot and died. <laughs> he didn't get the chance to become, like, during the holidays when the weather is cool, the spider hot cocoa mugger. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I don't even get that one. Don't We're worry about that. it. We got one oh, more and then we can get to like the brackets. Like a mug. Oh, okay. God, I forgot about <laughs> A mug of, of cocoa. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Pied Piper. Pied Piper right, 2. Yes. Oh, God. This innocent. Oh. So we got a dude. So you might be thinking with Pied Piper, folks, the image is of a man who is piping like the Pied Piper of Hamlet. No, no. This is a man doing science on corncob pipes. And that's all you need to know of that photo. Whatever you're imagining is exactly that image. It exactly how that man looks. It's jaw and all. OK, let me first say there is about a half a dozen villains in DC Comics called the Pied Piper. Usually their musical instrument theme. But this is one guy who was a criminal except with a criminal obsessed with every sort of pipe. He opened a pipe shop in Gotham City where he planned a series of crimes related yes! to pipes. How do, you a crime to, how do you how do you plan a crime related to pipes? Fuck if I know. Abilities, gadgetry. Piper was capable of building any kind of weapon out of regular pipes. You know, like the penguins <laughs> umbrellas, except playing. Um, the wiki doesn't give me enough information to know if it only includes smoking pipes or if it's any kind of pipe. I choose to believe it's smoking pipes. I hope to God yeah, it was in Tommy I really Bong hope it is things. just smoking pipes. I hope, he, a, I I hope he blew him. a pipe. Dear strong bad. I hope he blew a pipe and a laser came out. <laughs> and not like it shot, or folded open, like a little laser on an arm came out and there was a hand holding a gun and it shot a laser gun. That's what I need. <laughs> So he, he runs a, a pipe store in Gotham, but he's also a criminal who uses pipes to commit crimes. It's I don't know. I kind of love him, <laughs> but yeah, no. I, I wish the, the like I wish the wiki would give me more information but, because I, I need to know if it's just smoking pipes that he uses, because that makes him so much better than like every type of pipe. Yeah. This is all pretense. We got to get to the good stuff. Four right. plays over, boys. Let's get to the fun. Okay, oh, so boy, here comes my favorite. We're going back to the brackets. So uh, we're starting the Penny Plunderer. Gosh, we already you... read his whole spiel For last real? time. Blowing our load this early in the first <laughs> actual bracket. Just Penish. starting with the king. Well, we Penish. already know his deal, so. Pennies! <laughs> Pennies! I'm so hungry! <laughs> you, guys, you guys like pennies? Welcome to my house! Man, okay. you a handful of pennies as an appetizer. <laughs> so, yes, on on the Batman <laughs> side, man. we have the Penny Plunderer. This is a man. This is I, a man who's throwing pennies at people <laughs> with an aggressive need for murder, and it's accomplished nothing. Pennies. <laughs> Imagine at a hibachi restaurant where they start chopping up that one shrimp that they left behind to start throwing into people's mouths. Imagine that, but with pennies. He's doing this to his guests. <laughs> she is the best. I, I'm kind of imagining him just like using pennies to tip strippers and he's like <laughs> hurling them at full force. <laughs> pennies! Uh, here's my question. What emotion, what emotion is that face? Is it joy? Is it anger? Is it something else? Uh, it, it is somebody who knows who they are, what they want to do with their life and wouldn't be happier doing anything else right now. Pennies! Okay. Pennies! <laughs> On the Spider-Man side, we have Lady Stiltman. Oh, fuck off. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wow. so we mentioned, we mentioned Stiltman already, and apparently he oh. was considered relevant enough to make a female knockoff. So I, uh, I am mad that she said, to hell with you, insect. This is the dawn of a new age in crime. So says Lady Stiltman. This is the dawn of a new dimension in crime or a new height in crime. Yeah. Make something spatial yeah. related to your fucking bit. <laughs> You gotta be. You gotta be. I, I want to go back in time, change my Napster username to Lady Stiltman, download Metallica, and say, this is the dawn of a new age in crime. I feel like, I feel like in this matchup, though Lady Stiltman has all the advantages, both physically and electronically, Penny Ponderer takes it by virtue of the fact that she's like, what did you say? Badass! 
I can't hear him. Comes down and gets a bunch of pennies in the puss and gets knocked (laughs) right on her ass. If I might be an ultra nerd for a moment, Brandon Sanderson has done a number of uh, fantasy books with magic systems. The, um... Oh, goodness. Mistborn novels you're talking about with the coin shots, Yeah, the Mistborn ones where, like, you can literally use and push metal. Coins Mm. are so terrifying as a weapon when hurled at high speeds. Yeah, because they just go through everything. This guy can, like, you got fucking stilts? Here, have 500 pennies thrown at 2,000 miles an hour. Pennies. Anyway, uh, so um, yeah, her Go first ahead, appearance was in a Spider-Man Deadpool team up. Yeah, um, it says <laughs> Lady Stiltman's origin still remains a mystery. She uses a version of the Stiltman's battle suit. Deadpool defeated her by removing a manhole cover, causing <laughs> one of her legs to fall in and her other to step onto a high heel attached to the top of a truck. That sounds so right. she was defeated by the Wile E. Coyote Roadrunner method. <laughs> Deadpool knew his things. Um, Spidey webbed her to the wall after her second heist. Yeah, this feels like uh, this feels like a pretty right. uh, open shut. Penny <laughs> Plunder is gonna go easy on Lady Stilt Man. Put the he's gonna put his pennies away and just devour the stilts. Someone's gonna ask Penny Plunderer one day what he likes sexually, and he's just gonna reply, "Penis." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh boy. So I think Penny Plunderer wins this one. Um, yeah, because we believe in like, him. Because there's not really anything we could have um, put against him that would have been dumber. <laughs> he wins. Low diff. All that. I feel about Penny Plunderer the same way other people feel about, like, Neil Breen and Nicolas Cage bad movies. Penny Plunderer is my husbando. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next in the All bracket. Right. Next bracket. No, we've your got... breath is so coppery fresh, darling. You know what? The bl- is it blood or is it the copper of pennies? Anyway, <laughs> done, on I'm Batman's done, done. side, we have Calendar Man. No, oh, it's not the Calendar Man. Right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are going to be familiar with Calendar Man because <laughs> this character was later retconned to be less ridiculous and more a compelling villain. But he was okay. Not. Look at this. This was his original design. <laughs> Okay, so this is a guy wearing <laughs> okay. red. It's wearing all red with a sash around his waist that is just a whole bunch of numbers written on it, like yeah, like a man in an asylum scribbling on the walls. Yeah. Hey, Wendy, I really like your my nightmare about my algebra exam costume. He's he's got like an executioner's hood sort of deal, and he's got these giant shoulder. That's pads. not an executioner's hood. That's a waffle iron. <laughs> He's it's, got a big ass waffle iron. It's those things iron. together. <laughs> He's upset because somebody plugged the waffle iron in and it's hot. I swung that. Why Why would you plug the waffle iron in when I was sleeping on <laughs> oh, it? Oh, I was going to say earlier, dear strong man, how do you answer emails with 17 pipes in your hand? <laughs> dear strong man, why do you try to murder Homestar? Well, I'm trying to do something good for my <laughs> Okay, as good as zeros, but mine's okay. He's wearing giant shoulder pads that have the number one and the number 31 on them. Implying that the rest of these fucking panels on this weird ass cape are the other remaining 29 days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's got like a cascading cape of different like shoulder pads or or numbers. It looks like one of those like tear off calendars that you get where <laughs> yeah. every, every one is a different one and he just pasted a bunch of those on his back like post-its be that as it may if you take away everything awful about this outfit which is everything yeah that expression he still has a taser. that physical stature that is the <laughs> mortal combat scream level of intensity yeah. this dude fucks <laughs> so uh julian gregory day god he was fucked Better known as Calendar Man is known for committing themed crimes that correspond with holidays and significant dates. His name is Julian Gregory Day. By the way, there is no day on the calendar that doesn't have a holiday. Hold on. I actually have a calendar my friend made for this year that has all that stuff on it. I'll be right back. These crimes always having a relationship to the date they're committed. The theme may be related to what day of the week it is, or to a holiday, or to a special anniversary on that date. He will plan his crime around that day. He often wears different costumes, which correspond to the significance of the date. Oh, honey, no. (laughs) Though he does have a main costume, which has various numbers meant to represent days on a calendar, sprouting from the shoulders. A cape or a day. 
Batman number 312 is found the calendar man committing cries tied to the days of the week. Monday, for instance, was named after the moon, hence the lunar costume and theft. Tuesday named for T.I.W., the ancient god of war. Found calendar man in a centurion-like garb for his theft of military treasures. That's a fucking Norse. And on Wednesday, <laughs> named for Woden or Odin. Now you got that one right. <laughs> All right. I got the calendar. Uh, the, the rogue was clad as a Viking when he faced the Batman outside the Metropolitan Museum. Calendar man is playing the far, this farce to the hilt, he observed. His cycle has even eight wheels to emulate or Odin's eight-legged horse slept near. What happens when he misses a day? What happens to the budget on this one? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, what happened, sir? It's Thursday. I need a hammer and a car battery in a hurry. So today, September 23rd, is American Indian Day, apparently in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Checkers Day slash Dogs in Politics Day. Let's International Celebrate Bisexuality Day. Fuck yeah. And International Day of Sign Languages. So is Calendar Man going to rip off people's hands on International Day of Sign Languages? No, he's going to deafen no, wait. people. Does he combine all of those holidays into one crime? Does he like <laughs> does he like make out with a bunch of dudes while doing sign language? Oh my gosh! Calendar Man is going to go to the bisexual dogs and politics convention. It's like, all right, I need a bisexual, I need a dog, and I need a deaf person. I need a bisexual golden doodle as fast as you can. It needs to be deaf. <laughs> 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 you can't understand me. <laughs> or better yet, it's the opposite. I need a bisexual golden doodle that also knows American Sign Language. <laughs> you can't stop me. I'm Calendar Man. I took up <laughs> drinking. <laughs> okay, so the confident well, Calendar Man placed an ad in the newspaper <laughs> challenging Batman to stop him. The March 17th edition of the Gotham Gazette noted that an anonymous letter promises four successful robberies in four days, each day corresponding to a season of the year, plus one extra for a fifth season. Uh, spring arrived early that year in the form of a man in a flower suit, petals bursting from his <laughs> collar, leaves functioning as a cape at Gotham's <laughs> International Garden Show on the 17th. Is Batman just beating up a guy who works in Spirit Halloween? <laughs> is that what's happening? Is that just who Calendar Man is? A guy who works in Spirit Halloween? And The so only thing spookier than Halloween is not paying attention to proper safety. This guy feels like he steal he sneaks into the spirit warehouse where the stuff is until Halloween. And just <laughs> gives mayhem. Keep going. I'm dying. Okay, so uh, the Calendar Man's debut was tainted a bit by Batman and Robin's interference, but he had invited them after all. <laughs> Summer proved more amenable, and he escaped with the proceeds from a March 18th beauty pageant while dressed in a flaming <laughs> asbestos suit. Batman can't catch you if you're on fire. Polly mascot foam, <laughs> late! Uh, Autumn blew in on the 19th, courtesy of a wind machine that helped him pull off an armored truck robbery. And completing the cycle, the Calendar Man became a snowman to steal ice from a diamond show. Ice in quotes. Oh, that's from a, a diamond fucking show stretch. For his March 20 winter showing. Oh. Having racked up four consecutive failures, Batman was determined to thwart the robbery intended for the mysterious fifth season, which he deduced must be India's monsoon season. <laughs> Noting that an entertainer with a stage name of Maharaja the Magician was in town for a five-day engagement at the Bijou Theater, the Caped Crusader correctly gambled that this might be his target. Still wearing his magician's tuxedo, the calendar man was taken into custody on March 21st, the first day of spring. The crime season had come full circle. Yay. And then, oh god, there's Spider-Man's boy. Yeah. On the Spider-Man side, we have Typeface. Oh, fuck this guy. <laughs> Not my live journal account. Yeah, I would like to describe him. Okay, okay, try and describe him. <laughs> um, Imagine Guile's hair, but short and black and also late 40s. A, uh, a red Rutgers R emblazoned on the forehead. Uh, the squintiest uh, Quentin Tarantino that hasn't eaten for three months face 
and an army body directly out of the 1970s uh, budget VHS rack wearing very much just necklace bling of different fucking letters holding a sharpened is that a P or a B? I think I it's a it P. It, it looks sharp. Uh, and again, with he seems very flatulent yeah. from like the waist up. <laughs> he's he's wearing no shirt, just like no shirt, uh, like suspenders slash bandoliers. Combat suspenders. That's just suspenders. There's yeah. no bandolier there. Yeah. I think that very specifically, he doesn't have bullets. They're, they're Rob Liefeld suspenders. They have pouches all over them. <laughs> yep. so, yes. Uh, and he's saying, sleep well, my friend, and dream of spider things. Tomorrow will be another day and a momentous one. So he's just the life coach. <laughs> this is nice. You know what? Gordon Some of these villains need to diversify. Yeah. Gordon Thomas fought in, in Vietnam War. Uh, that's a. Yeah. That's, that, you know wikis uh -huh. <laughs> they're not, not the vietnam war just proper. in vietnam war yeah. this is the kind for of spell checking i expect from fandom <laughs> when they ate up every other fucking thing mm -hmm. for the u.s army in which he lost his brother joey upon his return to america gordon's wife left him and took their son with her feeling outcast gordon became a sign smith he was <laughs> okay. happy for a time until a man named george finch Bought the company he was working for, Ace Signs, and Gordon was laid off. Well, I mean, he's right to be upset. Yeah. Gordon started to hate everything that went wrong in his life and decided to become a supervillain. I was with you up through the everything that went wrong with life, but um, you made the wrong turn. <laughs> yeah. Calling himself typeface, he used a grease pencil to write letters on his face, including a large red R on his forehead for retribution. Nope, not even <laughs> revenge, huh? No, just retribution. He began committing That's just diet revenge. Yeah. He began committing vandalism throughout the city. <laughs> He's just stamping really hard foul language on the toilet sides. Yeah. Or the, the stall sides. He began committing vandalism throughout the city and while attacking local thugs, he caught the attention of Spider Man. Typeface used his giant letters as weapons and managed to defeat the web slinger. After successfully escaping and returning to his apartment, he replaced the R letter on his head with an A for annihilation. Okay, so how do you, you know what? For the amount of times we've seen people beat Spider-Man, I'm pretty sure they're just preying on his self-esteem issues. <laughs> just like, oh yeah, you know who will be there, Spider-Man? My uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, at one point he inspired another supervillain who went by the name Spellcheck. <laughs> this guy was inspired by Typeface to become a different villain. So, uh, yeah, canonically, a guy was inspired by a dude who fought Spider-Man with letters and followed in his footsteps as a proofreading themed villain with a big check mark <sighs> on his forehead. Here's the thing. He's got an ensemble that actually looks scary. It would be perfect yeah. if he was just like, I'm going to... <laughs> It's the, the check mark on his face ruins the whole costume, though. Well, because here's the thing: it would just be funny. It's like you spelled it wrong on the internet. I'm gonna stab you 57 <laughs> times now. I'm spell check, and I right. buy that as a villain. So, also, Sam pointed out she's mad that he has only one font uh, that he yeah. uses, <laughs> even though his name is typeface. I, I'm gonna <laughs> and say this she makes a compelling argument. How I'm evaluating these, it's it's not just the history of these villains or whatever. It, it's also it, how bad could they be in theory? Like, <laughs> uh, how maliciously bad could they be? I could see Calendar Man just escalating the days through a month and committing bigger and bigger acts of violence against humanity. And I can absolutely see somebody just going ham with like 50 what is it 50 pound weight sharpened peas raining from buildings in downtown metropolis i think i'm gonna have to go with calendar man <laughs> see here's the thing i feel like calendar man is a little bit like mr beast allow me to explain he has a gimmick oh, and he's, no. there's so much <laughs> pressure on him to keep the gimmick up and one up himself all the time that he's doomed to fail and get canceled <laughs> typeface oh, something about him appeals to me and i don't know what it is i feel like maybe it's because he kind of this is the kind of recklessness that belongs on a man 
who is like, eh, I may have a gimmick. I may not. I'm just going to kill people. Yeah, sure. I'm typeface, Meh, you know, so I, I'm kind of giving this to typeface. Completely mm. unrelated. I would like to file a complaint that you you cannot have both Donut Day and Cream Filled Donut Day. Pick one. No. Are they both the same day? No, they are not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they are double dipping. I feel like I'm the tiebreaker now and I don't know how to pick. See, <laughs> here's the heart. thing. Because, okay, I I think part of me wants to go with typeface because it's so far it's been a cl clean sweep of Batman villains. And I think they're both like so close in terms of like absolutely ludicrous that either could take it. And I kind of want to go towards Spider-Man because <laughs> I think we got to give one Spider-Man villain. But Calendar Man, I think, is just a little bit dumber. And I <laughs> I, I don't know. I think if I'm being totally objective ah! and fair, I have to give it to Calendar Man. Oh, I don't know how to decide. <laughs> All right. Uh, American Touch Tag Day. I feel like the only reason you exist is to remind people that touch tag exists. Tag exists. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying to do something here. Yeah, no, mm. I made my decision. Now I'm just right. trying to thwart you. Uh, I, I think if I'm going to be fair, I have to give it to Calendar Man. Okay. Oh, but I, I, I really do like typeface a lot. He's <laughs> so stupid. I'm very glad that they decided to put National Nut Day in October, not during No Nut November. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, let's go to right, the next, next bracket. One. Yeah, next bracket. Oh, I know one of these assholes. That's the fucking... <laughs> okay, on God, the I Batman side, thing. we've got Rainbow Creature. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Is it really rainbow if it's four colors? <laughs> <laughs> you picked now, up on that pretty quick. It, it's, it's Napolitano plus one creature. <laughs> <laughs> it's the gelato monster it's got all the flavors cherry lemon radiation and gravel uh that's that's warhead's super sour cherry uh ridiculously lemon uh grassy green i guess and uh uh jeez <laughs> how, how do i describe this guy because like I think when people hear rainbow creature, they're not picturing this. Imagine um, when creature. the dinosaur nuggets came out malformed. <laughs> you know, the Bugs Bunny monster that would show up occasionally that had the weird ass, huge torso proportions. Oh, it's yeah. Just, it's strong mad with a head. It is strong mad with a head. <laughs> but it's, it is. It is strong mad with a head. But he's got four different zones of color on him. Yeah. Going from hot to cool. And they're not, they're vertical, not horizontal. He also appears to be glowing. Like someone yeah. drew this to make it as scary as fucking possible, <laughs> for, but failed. Yes. Yeah, I think you're right. Like this feels like someone in the Silver Age was trying to make it scary. And it still like, looks they completely thing, ridiculous. They wanted this thing to be invisible and all you would see is a silhouette in the dark and that would have worked. Like, this feels like it should be a Forbidden Planet style monster. Hmm. But they said, no, we're going to give it colors to attract the kids. And the artist slit his wrists that night. Man, the original demo for Mr. Yuck stickers. I kind of love this. All right. <laughs> oh, the rainbow creature is a powerful inhuman behemoth found in South America. Each of its colors represents a different power, which holds, oh, it holds. And when that power is used, a color turns white until it drains the same color from something else. Oh, every word in that sentence made me sad. <laughs> oh, <God>. The rainbow <laughs> creature was a being which emerged from a volcano in South American Republic nation because no comic book writer knows what a fucking volcano does. It did this during a time of political <laughs> discourse, okay, in which an aspiring dictator named Diaz was attempting to conquer the nation through rebellions. You know, a Metal Gear plot. When <laughs> Batman and Robin, who were in South America dealing with the rebellions. No, that so it's Far Cry 2. Attempted to battle the creature. It turned them into two-dimensional flattened versions of themselves before escaping. <laughs> Diaz attempted uh, to convince the government that he controlled the creature in order to blackmail the nation's leaders into making him a dictator. But Batman exposes as a lie. You can't control the rainbow creature. It's unchecked. Whew. 
Hey, I'm using a prism. Okay, I figured it out. I figured it out. This is just a terrifying mascot for a breakfast cereal. <laughs> using a prism, you know, the, a bat prism. Batman proceeded <laughs> to shine a rainbow light Diaz's way, chasing him out of town. Following this bad Oh, you chased him out of town with gay pride. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, I get those homophobes. Following this, Batman teamed up with the townsfolk to trick the rainbow creature into using up all of its powers and disappearing like in the wind. Presumably dead, but Before probably not. This thing probably still kills people with its <laughs> weird color powers. Yeah, Before they just you don't continue. notice because you're not in South America anymore. <laughs> I would I'm going to put the calendar away, I promise, Tom. Oh. But I would like to say that I find some of these overlappings to be very suspicious, like Virus Appreciation Day, which shouldn't. What? Should that actually be a day? And it's also National Boyfriend's Day. <laughs> <laughs> There's also National Take Your Teddy Bear to Work Day, which happens to overlap with uh, Moldy Cheese Day. And I can see this being a problematic for somebody's extremely cherished treasure. All right. I hate. All right. Where I are we with Spider-Man? The hate, living brain. I fucking hate this thing so much. I hate it. It's a speak and spell. <laughs> it is a speak and spell. It's an and anthropomorphic it is, speak and spell from that robot rapping game in Jackbox. Oh, okay, yeah. So it this looks thing like tied into modern comics. This thing has to do is. Oh, I got to explain this when we. <laughs> has oh, IBM no! gone too far? It, it, God, it you have the like, entry about Dr. Octopus. God, I hate it yeah so okay oh. so it looks like one of those early sci-fi robots with like the big yeah. clunky like it looks like a radiator that they yeah. put robot parts on and yeah uh, and those robot parts don't have like human hands or feet they're like spheres and rods yeah it's it's entire gimmick is i have transistors fear me i have transistors you know when that was the feat of computers yeah, yes. so the description of the wiki says a foe of the superhero Spider-Man, the original living brain was created by the fictional International Computing Machines Corporation That's and billed as the most intelligent computer and robot in existence, capable of solving virtually any question asked. OK, I need to point this out. Mm. Can I point out that a computer brain is by definition not living and a brain is, is already a living thing? This is like calling LeBron James the Wayne Gretzky of hockey. But Johnny Five is alive. <laughs> Did you hear about the new Family Bears movie? Jaleel White reprises his role as Steve Urkel, and Timothy Chalamet will play black Steve Urkel. <sighs> this is like my argument about the Roman Catholic Church all over again. The living brain is what they called this. Yeah, I see it. Oh. <sighs> and there's also a bunch of people looking on stunned. <laughs> oh. We gotta, we gotta oh. unvogue it. Also, the coffee by, machine by has where, come to life. By where Peter is standing in relation to this thing, he is unable to hold on to this motherfucker. <laughs> like he's just, his hands haven't quite caught it. It's so. It looks like the legs look like it belong on a furniture set from the same era this comic was made. It's like he's trying to wrangle a hippo and he's like strong enough but just can't get his arms around it. <laughs> Why? Why was I programmed <laughs> only for flails? Uh, the Living Brain soon after its creation was brought to Midtown High School by its creator, Dr. Petty, as part of a demonstration of its ability to solve any problem. Can solve love. After the Living Brain's <laughs> demonstration, two workmen hired to transport it overheard the Living Brain's ability to answer anything and decided to steal it in order to use its abilities for gambling purposes. Which, that, that's not a bad angle. Gambling! Pet if it can, if it, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! no. <laughs> if, if Penny Plunderer and the Living Brain teamed up, they'd be unstoppable. <laughs> it's just like feeding pennies into it like a slot machine and pulling on its weird arms. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, it gets more powerful with every penny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm go to the last to... point, Tom. There is uh, more to this. I'm I'm so glad you started with the best because you made me giddy the entire episode. This is <laughs> <laughs> caught in the middle of stealing the living brain by Doctor Petty. The two workmen got into a scuffle with him, which ended with one of them being knocked into the control panel on the living brain's chest, which caused the living brain to malfunction. 
because they put all the most sensitive parts of his instruments right in the front where anyone can knock into them and yeah. <laughs> destroy it. So yeah. going on a rampage through Midtown High, the Living Brain was eventually shut down by Spider-Man, who destroyed its control panel in a brief fight. Living Brain later appeared as a member of the Sinister, Sinister Six. Six. <laughs> yeah. When they fought Spider Man, who at the time was Octo. So okay. I got to explain this motherfucker. <laughs> so this was brought back to bring an end to the susp- superior Spider Man storyline. And this is how Otto Octavius brought himself back to life after Peter got his body back. He copied his brain inside the living brain and stayed there in Peter's company, plotting his demise. And Peter never fucking noticed. And I hate comics so much. I fucking hate this thing so much. I want to give it to the color creature, the rainbow creature, because that thing was never stopped. Whereas this thing is just stupid. Well, okay. If we're saying stupider, I'm saying the living brain's dumber. Hmm. I think my vote is still on the rainbow creature, but they're both really dumb. I, I, my money is on the living brain entirely. Hmm. Because the rainbow creature at least was like, like, you know, the old, the Wendigo, when it was like Wolverine's thing. That kind of what it feels like to me. Like there was a potential to make this thing scary. This is just a shitty Hong Kong knockoff of Robbie the Robot. I only know Wendigo from the X-Men arcade game. (laughs) That's fair. (laughs) Wendigo. Yeah, it was Wendigo. Comics are stupid. Okay, Steve-O, what's your vote between Rainbow Creature and the Living Brain? Uh, Living Brain, hands down. Okay. Then God, living brain a is, is a yeah, it's a sweep. Is it is it clean sweep? <laughs> Good. Well, I I was gonna vote for rainbow creature, but Mike convinced me that living brain is Good. Is that's dumber, why Mike so. is on the show. Yeah, he's he's the voice <laughs> of peer reason. pressure. He's the voice of peer pressure. Let's go to the next bracket. Eh, reason peer pressure. My tomato potato. <laughs> on the Batman side, bracket number seven. On the Batman side, we have Kite Man. Fuck you, Kite Man's peak. <sighs> <laughs> Look at this costume. He's peak. Okay, so ah! he's he's wearing two tones yep. of green, which clash oh. horribly with a yellow helmet, uh, and like a yellow kite symbol on his chest. Kind of looks like Bubble Man from Mega Man Two if he were more human looking. Yeah, yeah, he, he does. looks like he belongs on the box um, art for Mega Man Two. He's he's got like a red visor. Just none of these colors go together. Um, and there's another clip of him from one of his early appearances where he's wearing all pink with a yellow yeah. helmet and a yellow kite symbol. Um, oh, and if we scroll down here, I've got a third image, which is <laughs> later on. Kite Man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sorry. I, I'm imagining Kite Man attaching thousands and thousands of kites to a major city. Thus, thereby lifting the city into the air, holding it for ransom, and him looking on maliciously saying, Let's all go fly a cut. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. Kite Man has recently kind of popped back up in pop culture by virtue of the fact that he's on the Harley Quinn show. And ah. they took the dumb they took the dumb they took him. I mean, they make him stupid there, but they also gave him a heart of gold, so much so that the audience turned around and said, Kite Man is too good for Poison Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to hear the backstory. The I want to hear this. Because, so his entire thing was, hey, everybody, I'm Kite Man. Fought bad men, so that's pretty cool. Broski, anyone got a beer? Yeah, I enjoy this. <laughs> Babe, I'm, uh, you ever glided at the city at night? No, and I don't want to, Kite Man. All right, that's a firm no. Kite Man respects women's boundaries. <laughs> and that's <laughs> just his gimmick the whole way through. He's legitimately... They, he got so stupid, he boomeranged back around to becoming charming again. So I absolutely hate this first sentence here. Sure. Uh, Charles Chuck Brown yeah. is a man who armed himself with kite weapons to be used to commit crimes. He flies mm-hmm. with a big kite strapped to him. He also uses a barrage of kites to overwhelm his enemies. He ran afoul of Batman and Robin on different occasions. They named him Charlie Brown. <laughs> yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. <sighs> he possessed a variety of gimmicked kites, including a jet powered hang glider, which that's pretty legit. That allowed for quick escapes, a mammoth kite that the kite man used to shuffle criminals out of Gotham's prison. 
<laughs> a flashbulb kite and a trap net kite. Wouldn't it be funny if you left that kite behind for someone to follow him? <laughs> at which point they took it and they got caught in it. And Bab is like, ah, oh, damn it. How did I not see this coming? Look at Chris. I have flown too high to the sun. I should have brought the back kite. Uh. Well, I don't no, know if you would like to edit this in when it was appropriate, Tom. I'm going to mm -hmm. drop it into the wiki sifters chat. Do you remember, uh, we just went through it, the image that you described of the living brain with those people looking on, all like, yeah. oh! There was a restaurant near me for many years that shut down probably about a decade ago called Tahina's, and it sold Middle Eastern food. Hmm. And for the last two years, they had some really funny, like, instructions on how to eat your wrap. And <laughs> the... the <laughs> the expressions on those people reminded me very much of the reaction of this woman to a man gloriously holding a falafel wrap into the air going, oh my Whoa, God, hold, hold oh my, on guys. Oh my God. He's like, he has, oh my God. He's way too excited. <laughs> oh my God. I love the halo emanating from the rap. <laughs> <laughs> Judith. Judith, I can't handle this rap, man. <laughs> I wish I took a picture of the whole thing. There were so many funny images on there, but I didn't get the chance oh, before it shut down. Oh, but no. this, this panty disintegration face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like, like, I've seen a tight rap before, but girl, 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 this was toyed. And yes, this will be something that needs to be seen to be believed. Okay, hold on. I've done I have my to best show to describe this... it. It's hard to do. I have to show this to chat. <laughs> Don't describe it to the podcasting audience. The some glory is too much for us normal men. <sighs> my wife's peeking over at the picture, and she's even she's trying not to laugh. <laughs> oh my god, honey, 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 it's toyed. <laughs> Does anyone else? Feel like the dude is just Jake Peralta from Brooklyn Nine Nine going. This is the toitus, and that's Boyle's hand behind him. I've watched a lot of Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> Noise. What, what's amazing is there's a there's a finger pointing, and we will never know what the expression was on their face. Oh, we have no oh. idea. This is you lost media now. <laughs> that's my full awful. <laughs> okay but we went off on this tangent right before yeah. we got to this all important sentence mm. using kites of his own batman tracked down and captured the criminal after he rescued <laughs> some crooks from prison <laughs> i was right the only way to defeat my enemy is to become my enemy i'm gonna use the bat kite i am I'm, the knight I, I'm i am the kite knight <laughs> I, I would totally see Batman flaunting his fucking wealth by getting one of those $900 super stunt kites with 19 trails coming off of it and just Hold constantly up. doing loop-de-loops very loudly while Here's you're trying to eat a bag of fries. Here's the thing. It's a known thing that Batman frequently glides with his cape and it has a glide function. This means <laughs> yeah. that it's implied that Batman was being outglided by someone else and he went, Alfred, I need I need a bat kite. In which Alfred said, "Sir, I don't know how to tell you this, but your your cape glides." No, nah, he was too good, Alfred. <laughs> I need I need I need to beat him at his own game. Sir, is this the supervillain equivalent of sleeping with his wife? Maybe. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh God, there's so much more. Uh, yes, please continue. So yeah, uh, Hawkman, Hot Girl, and Zatanna encountered him next, and this is the New Earth version of him. In Hawkman, yeah. number four, 1986. In this story, his real name was revealed, Charles Brown. It was also revealed that when he was a small boy, Charles Brown was fascinated with kites, thus causing him to adopt and use kites as part of his guise as a costume villain. A bat flew through Batman's window. A kite through, <laughs> flew through Kite Man's window. In his encounter with Hawkman, Hawkgirl, and Zatanna, the Kite Man's target was a treasure known as the Golden Eagle, but he was thwarted by the three heroes. Crash landing into a tree, Kite Man cried, rats. And this is what it says in the wiki. <laughs> they wanted to make sure that you understood that Kite Man said rats. Normally he says kites, but this time he said rats. Nuts. Like, they were oh. winking and nudging hard. Uh, in Infinite Crisis, the Joker reported that Kite Man was thrown off Wayne Tower without his kite by Deathstroke. 
after he firmly refused to join the secret society of supervillains. Kite Man, however, survived his fall and reached some low rank in post-crisis Gotham City's underworld in the pages of 52. He is one of a few criminals, including Sewer King, Mirage, and Rossin, beaten to death by intergang S- boss Bruno... Sewer King? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sewer King? And he's yeah. not a septic servant? <laughs> Are you uh-huh. kidding me? <gasps> so... They they established that he was thrown off of the top of a giant tower without his kite and survived just to be beaten to death by another <laughs> sort of criminal like a day later. Like <laughs> it's just like I have a kite for every situation. Even if I'm thrown off a building, I have my emergency kite. What's your kite? What's your kite from being beaten to death? This is Mannheim. Oh, uh, he just gets his ass. Whooped. All right. <laughs> let's let's go I, I i'm starting to reach my exhaustion threshold i hope we can get through one well, more maybe bracket you cause... shouldn't have changed the subject 50 times before we got to the first bracket i'm not the one that keeps inviting me back on tom <laughs> we got so many guys left <laughs> we have so many um all right you want to speed read in earth prime charles chuck brown senior was an engineer who specialized in aerodynamics and who had previously worked uh, for joker and he I this is so badly written by design. To the, I don't know. He designed the Joker mobile. Do this. He was confronted by Batman during a gang war between the super criminals in Gotham between Joker and Riddler. Batman wanted Chuck to reach out to Joker and work as a double agent for Batman and threaten him into doing it. However, Joker wanted Chuck to work as a mole for Riddler, who had already figured out that he was working for Batman, what? resulting in Chuck being forced to double cross three of the most dangerous criminals okay, in Gotham. Okay, fucking Columbo. <laughs> After this, yeah. Chuck's son, Charles Brown Jr., was murdered by the Riddler, who had poisoned the string on the kite which the boy was playing with. Yeah, that was a weird time. Distraught and wanting vengeance on Riddler for the murder of his son, Charles created a hang glider suit for himself and then dubbed himself Kite Man, officially joining Joker's team in the gang war. Within the war, Kite Man became considered something of a joke despite his technological skills, and it was revealed that Riddler purposely drove Chuck to insanity as he knew he was weak-willed enough to give away the Joker's location of pressured. Ultimately, Charles allied himself with Batman to defeat Riddler by tricking his forces into wearing specially designed gliders for their crimes, but which Charles rigged to have Riddler's men fly into the bat blimp. (laughs) I've read that comic, it's fucking zany. They treat it so seriously, too. The death of his son. And it's just, it's bonkers. Riddler's into... It's oh God, so it's weird so because, like, it sounds like it's it's very serious. Up until the point where he tricks Riddler's men into wearing his specially designed gliders, which... To fly into the bat blimp. Which are rigged yeah, to fly into the bat blimp. Yeah, it's comic books, man. Sometimes yeah. we sh- maybe we should have stopped. <laughs> All right, and uh, on the Spider-Man side, we have Screwball. Screwball's actually a fucking actual menace, though. Screwball was... Okay, so her uh, her costume is... She wears, like, an all-white... It almost looks like an Olympic skiing um, yeah. outfit. Like, all-white with, like, purple highlights. And it's branded with her name all over it. Screwball. It says Screwball on her helmet and on her sleeve and on her leg. And yeah, uh, yeah she's wearing like gold goggles and she's got a, a purse dangling from her, which is maybe she stole Odd. it. it yeah. There's there's like money flying out of it as Pennies! she like Pennies. as she like Iceman glides away from Spider-Man, who's like left wondering how she got what away. The was what the fuck was that? Uh. Uh, Screwball was self-styled as a performance artist and the world's first live blogging supervillain. All right, immediately hate her. (laughs) She was an internet personality and social media attention monger to such an extent that she committed crimes on camera. Her real name and identity remain as of yet unknown. Her first crimes were filmed by an amateur camera crew and uploaded on a website. One of her earliest crimes consisted of robbing an off-track betting parlor for the sake of it, but she was cited by Spider-Man. He tried to give chase, but eventually fall behind due to Screwball's proficiency in parkour. Yeah, you know, because Spider-Man's no good at parkour. Yeah. He he, he has no skills he at all can, parkour. He can climb anything. He can yeah. swing from rooftops. How he has he insane agility. This bitch outruns him. 
I hate Screwball so much because I know her from the Spider-Man PS4 game. And oh, no. she's she is the most annoying fucking thing. Because all she does is she's like she's live streaming randomly from somewhere and Spider-Man's trying to tail her. And she's like, we're going to get the views and the likes, everybody. Oh. I'm going to make Spider-Man. Oh, oh, so everything I hate about Borderlands 3. Oh, yeah. Just if you can think of an annoying social media personality quirk and make it a supervillain, they put it all on her. I've never had a character I've wanted to run over with a truck quite as much. <laughs> like, like, and that's not the actress's fault. She did a very good job playing the most annoying bitch in comics. Kite man, kite man all the way. Kite Man's oh, okay, so much but, more dumb though, and I love it. Okay, him. but how? Yeah, how do we judge this? Because like, which is the worst villain? Like, well, well, worst, worst villain is Kite Man on a lot of levels, but we love him because he's God's special. Yeah, idiot. Screwball actually is in some ways threatening because she'll be the kind of girl that will fucking put a bomb in a building to hurt people, and live stream it going for the lulls, right? Yeah. So that it's not hard for either of you to imagine this woman being a legitimate fucking problem. Yeah. In in every way, shape, or form. Kite Man's like, I've got a kite. And I'm doing my so, best. Yeah, I'm so going Kite with Man my is heart. a worse villain, but we hate Screwball more. Yeah, basically. Yeah, okay, kite I man. can agree with that. So Kite Man. Yeah. I also would like to say, just to prove this to Tom, I will only speak when I'm going to give my opinion on which one it is. Oh, I also no. would like to say that whenever you ask me to come on this, you say, can you record on this date? You don't say, can you record a good episode <laughs> on this date? <laughs> you get he's what you, you ask for. He got, he's got you I don't too. even know what I ask for at this point. <laughs> it's, it's, look. You ask for family. Bracket eight, Spider-Man, Empathoid. <laughs> it's Let's just talk. bad vision. It's just bad vision. Why is bad vision here? <laughs> He's that's also that's fucking purple. <laughs> the worst part is his name is Empathoid, which implies that he knows <laughs> he understands someone's feelings. I would hate to have a robotic capacity to feel empathy. And my arch enemy is Spider-Man because I would have his depression. Um, he looks like a purple silver surfer. That's the best I could or describe vision. him. Epithoi was an android who was created by an unknown alien race. They always are. To mm -hmm. be a tune, I'm blaming Thanos. I'm, I blame the Watchers. To its master's emotions. However, it craved s stronger, more violent emotions. I'm blaming the system lords. And eventually exhausted and outlived its creators. It was the last survivor. It was the last surviving being on its barren planet. Eventually went dormant below a temple. Morbius, living vampire, discovered the planet when using the living, er oh, the living eraser's dimension device to flee the Earth. You know, because it was Morbin time. Uh, <laughs> destroy the dimension <sighs> device <laughs> and went on a rampage to feed the fear and panic it generated. This drew the attention of Spider-Man, who defeated Morbius, but allowed the Empathoid to take possession of Spider-Man. Fighting his control, Spider-Man took the Empathoid to a football game, which overloaded him with emotions and forced him to deactivate. I don't believe that. I believe it felt Spider-Man's guilt over Uncle Ben and fucking went, oh, no. oh, this is too much. Oh, this guy's got issues. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, okay. I, oh. I like this idea that Spider-Man took him to a football game thinking um, this is like the peak of human emotion. But really, the issue is that Empathoid spent all day with Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, this guy's got problems. Oh my god. Wait, oh, he, so god. his job is so he fights crime, but his job is actually committing crimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't understand. I don't understand. What's with all these dead women around him? What's with all these bodies? Oh, oh. Anyway, next villain? All right. On Batman's side, we have the eraser. And just Get a load of this guy's costume. He's just he's just got a pencil for a head. He's wearing he's, a pinstripe suit. He's got a pencil hat with in like and out. Tiny little goggle holes from yeah, the for his out eyes. But you need him to see right? with, his like, pencil mask. If he didn't have eyes, that would be stupid. I think it's especially weird due to like his his function. OK, so here's yeah. here's the description here. Lenny Fiasco was a college classmate of Bruce Wayne. Who fucking wasn't? and was continually mocked by his fellow Fuck. students for all the mistakes he made in class. Who fucking doesn't have a history with Bruce at this point? Yeah. 
Jesus Christ. The few people who remembered Lenny always pictured him with an eraser in hand correcting the mistakes. The only girl Lenny ever wanted was classmate <laughs> Celia Smith. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm imagining Batman going up to the eraser, but it's not the eraser. It's just Lenny Fiasco. And he looks at his hand and his hand says Lenny equals white. Carl equals <laughs> black. <laughs> the only girl Lenny ever wanted was classmate Celia Smith, and he planned to take her to the school's ice carnival. Lenny was crushed when she chose to go with Bruce Wayne. It's not really up there with Dr. Doom's rivalry with Richards, is it? <laughs> uh, feeling quite bitter, he turned to a life of crime, developing an eraser costume that could eliminate all evidence from a crime scene. Which implies that he just rubs the top of his head against the ground, <laughs> yeah. like a coke fiend. Just going, <laughs> I got it, I got the evidence. <laughs> oh shit, I made a spelling mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no fingerprints. No. <laughs> he took out advertisements. Oh god, there's more to this. Yeah, movie. he took out advertisements as the eraser in the secret underground, a periodical aimed at Gotham City's small time criminals. Come on down to eraser financing, where high interest rates are a thing of the past. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta kill Bruce Wayne. <laughs> 10%? <laughs> 9% <laughs> Anyway uh, <laughs> For a 20% commission Before taxes <laughs> Taxes? <laughs> they're, they're paying taxes on their crimes <laughs> uh, The eraser offered to remove All clues at a crime scene Before a police investigation Could be conducted Don't take chances Let the eraser erase every clue from your crimes Only 20% of Surreal. job before taxes Right this to box real. 19611, <laughs> general delivery. In his suit and full head mask, the eraser resembled a living number two pencil. He did a commendable job, and the police were baffled at the lack of clues at a series of bank robberies. All they could find is this weird pink powder everywhere. <laughs> Let, Lenny gets home. Holy shit, that worked. So if his if his job is just he's like a cleanup guy for crimes, like why does he need the costume? What is, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. When your when your clientele are assholes like Two Face, the Riddler, and the Joker, and you're just a professional, you need you need to look like you fit in. Okay? Yeah. Like I've known you for a while now. I think we can both agree professionals do not make the <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. Like, would you here's the thing. You need to make the Joker laugh, right? And if you're cleaning up after a fucking Joker no. crime, no, and you show that this mask, legitimate. He's, Please do not make this like, legitimate. He's gonna look at you and go, fuck it. I love this guy. He's I'm hiring him just to work parties. And you're, you're, he would just have the eraser in the corner and just giving him buckets of money. Because he would just be like, I love him. I love his whole thing. I love, don't you hurt him, he's my <laughs> He would protect the eraser the way Deadpool would protect the guy from fucking Hunt. What's the name of the dude from, not Ned, um, the guy, uh, Pookie Bear mustache guy from the movies. Peter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Peter. He would protect the eraser the way Deadpool protects Peter. It's just like, holy shit, it's the eraser. Don't you fucking touch him, Batman. <laughs> He's my son. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something more logical. That, oh, I guess I guess if he works for people like Two-Face and the Joker, there, yeah. there is a definite it's advantage to anonymity. You, like, you probably yeah. don't want these guys to know who you are after your job is done. But And you need them to think you're fucked up, too. Like, Scarecrow yeah. would just look at him and go, you are race shit? Yeah, that makes sense. I'm a therapist. That sounds about right. <laughs> and they just, you know, get to work. Uh, I have uh, a lot of questions. <laughs> you should. Oh, uh, there's uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that to Xavier tomorrow to see if that cracks him up as he's cracking me up. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah you got to do that. Um, if he's like, 
you're trying to get him up uh, to go to school and he doesn't want to get out of bed. Just rub your hair on his stomach back and forth Tom, really if fast. if my son <laughs> does not want to get <laughs> out of bed, I will gladly let him sleep until 11. This is a child who typically gets up between 4.30 and 5.30. Enthusiastic <laughs> to go downstairs, eat his breakfast, and read. Wow. Oh, were you? I don't... <laughs> I'm blessed with something I can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> 4.30 yeah. in the morning doesn't deserve to exist. Yeah, you, I, I feel you. Poor you. man, your child I mean, reads. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what this is doing. I can't hate him for wanting to read. That's so nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like a father, this inconvenience is a good thing you have wrought. Yeah, we got a similar sort of thing where like both of Lily's parents are introverts and she's kind of extroverted and yeah. we're like As she can be at that age you know it's great that she's so good at running over it to other kids and making friends but we're like i can't keep up with this child <laughs> <laughs> like oh oh great we have to talk to parents now <laughs> all right anyways uh anyway. my vote is 100 percent with eraser uh mine yeah mine is yeah no mine's oh, with empathoid for the depression oh. he now has from Spider-Man. <laughs> this, this, this is a character that will only come back with more depression. But I love the eraser. Act uh, no. um, I'm switching oh my yeah. vote. Eraser. Uh, uh, eraser. We missed this one thing. Powers and abilities. The eraser yeah. wore shoes tipped with pencil point blades that could also emit a sleeping gas. <laughs> and fill out your Scantron sheet. <laughs> he wore a mask topped off with a giant eraser that could rub out evidence from crime scenes like it was his head <laughs> it was his he eraser head <laughs> <laughs> I was right how do we not vote for him at this point I studied under boss Nass motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> we were right <laughs> we were right we were right <laughs> Oh, that's not good. No, that's not good at all. I was hoping he'd have bleach and a rag or some shit. Oh, Joker's gotta where's, love this guy. Where did he get he's this gonna eraser do, that magically he's gonna erases Joker's, evidence? He's going to be Joker's ride or die. He's just going to look at him and go, I love him. I love his everything. I need him in my life. He's the best man at my wedding. Who are you marrying? Oh, no. Who cares about that bitch? The eraser. Is the <laughs> All I want is for you to be there. This is like, and the eraser, meanwhile, has slowly gotten more sane over time. But you don't tell the Joker you're not his best friend. And sure enough, there is someone in this shot who looks suspiciously like Joker. If you see that purple shoulder and green oh, yeah. hair. Which in no way de-enforces my kid. In that uh, it, it doesn't look like at all that little, that black smudge on his shoulder is the imprint from a hand gripping him so warmly and enthusiastically. I love this guy. <sighs> oh the question oh. is, do we want to do more brackets? Because it doesn't look like we're going to get through all of them tonight. Oh, well, where, are you kidding me? Let's line. go. Let's go. All right. I could do another yeah, 15 at least. I, I refuse to, before my surgery, I refuse to leave something half done. We're getting through okay. this. All right, all right. Oh, okay. All Bracket right. number nine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Bracket number nine. On the Batman side, we have the spinner. Oh. <laughs> and look at this. Why is costume. he not a post big wheel? <laughs> he These is... two belong together. Tom, one he... last thing. Yes. Imagine when you're editing. If every time you had to use the delete tool, it made that noise. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how much I have to edit out in every single episode? Oh, I, I, I do, because I, I also a edited a podcast for many years. I know exactly yeah. how much gets yeah. cut out. Is it a lot? I bet it's a lot. <laughs> it's anyway, a the lot. spinner. I'll read it. I'll read it. Okay. Swami Yimir. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> wore a metallic suit of green armor covered in spinning discs and carried a buzzsaw gun to commit crimes to Gotham City. You know. Uh, he was a thief who used spinning objects to confound the dynamic duo, who are frequently confounded by spins. <laughs> Spinner used spinning impregnated glass? What? I, I just copied and pasted, man. impregnating glass that is not a section of archive of our own that I thought existed, and now I am scared to check. 
To blind them, a giant spinner top to impede them, it uses a gun that fires a spinning buzz saws as a weapon. I think he can kind of just cut it off at the spinning buzz saw, so, my man. I don't think he needs let me, more. Let me describe what he looks like. He kind of looks like... But mom, I want to impregnate glass! <laughs> he, he looks like a metallic Michelin man that's just covered yeah, in does. like... He looks like a space ghost villain. He's yeah, a he's tin like man us. on space ghost. He's just covered in rings from head to toe. Someone stacked a bunch of pie plates and made a man. That is what oh, this he person. looks like. Yeah, he, he okay. He looks like you put TikTok from <laughs> Wizard of Oz's head on top of uh, the Michelin Man, and he's got a spinning <laughs> propeller beanie. I would imagine that amount of spinning things, at least a few of them, aren't the most well-oiled or well-balanced bearings. So instead of making that lovely noise that Eraser does. <laughs> it, it, it just sounds like one of those 1960s vibrating hotel beds. I think all of the different rings on him uh, like rotate probably in, in like alternately so that one's going left and the other's going <laughs> God, right. He can't move. Yeah, and he, just... he, he kind of looks like he modeled himself after like a big boring drill or something. And <laughs> yeah, not a butt plug. Or, or a ribbed anything. And did I mention he's all green? <laughs> yeah. Like, solidly green. He looks like, like he should say, why Why was I programmed? If, he looks like he should be a robot. Yeah. Uh, powers and abilities. Oh. The spinner's oddly armored costume protected him from most harm, able to deflect bullets, and rendering anyone unable to effectively <laughs> deal blows oh to him. Oh my gosh. So he's the worst person to stand in front of you in the complaints line, like trying <laughs> yeah. to talk to the manager, because it doesn't matter what happens to him. He's not going to give up. <laughs> well, not at all a good fighter. The spinner in reality possessed above average strength and size. His weapons included a buzzsaw gun, which could prove deadly in the right hands, and giant spinning tops and mechanical fans. The right hands, not his hands. No. Someone, <laughs> yeah, someone else's. Hands. We didn't say he's good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, oh. and on the Spider-Man side, we have a villain named Slide. Oh, this guy's kind of slick. Yeah, he's got a cool costume. I will give him that. Yeah, he's, he's got a good um, look. I don't he's know why Lion is in the background, but um, yeah, he, I think that's actually. Yeah, he's got a slick costume. It looks like an that's that's Taskmaster. Oh, uh, all white ninja costume with like green yeah. uh, knee pads. Um, yeah, he looks actually pretty good. Armbands, and he's got like one of the, he's got like a Foot Clan like mask with like goggles. His name's this Slide. guy wasn't stupid until the last fucking bullet point, and then he got dumb. Yeah. Go ahead, Tom. His name is Slide with a Y in seven I for some reason. Uh, mm hmm. Jalome Beecher was a talented chemical engineer who created a chemical coating that, when applied to any object, eliminated all friction between that object and surfaces. He's named Slide because that is literally his thing. He just runs into a room and then just slides and no one can stop him. He has a superpower called Helios. The problem is, this was actually a JoJo protagonist's powers in one of their arcs. <laughs> oh, no. oh. Um, creating a special uniform coated with the chemical. Beecher can yeah. move at high speeds on foot by sliding with extreme maneuverability. <laughs> I just Hang like on, the that. last bullet point's the saddest. Okay. Say it. He le he later redesigned his costume with a more ninja esque look as part of a midlife crisis. There we go. He he was doing good. He was actually <laughs> doing okay because a zero friction suit makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah. you could do some really cool stuff, comic styling. His outfit is slick. The second he had the ninja midlife crisis. <laughs> He fell, he fell down that ladder so hard past the spinner. Because at least the spinner stayed on theme, you know? I feel like, like, in comic book logic, a character who's really slick and who can, like, run through a room and everyone tries to grab and they can't grab on is actually pretty yeah, effective. Yeah, that's actually legit. But the, but the yeah. fact that he doesn't run, he just slides all the way across the room just makes it weirdly comical. Like, yeah. And he calls himself Sly, like... Yeah. With a Y, it's... It could work. It could really work. Like, this guy is just like... You, you'd you have to make him like, I'm just a criminal, right? He's yeah. not like a murderer or any shit like that. Yeah. But he comes in... This guy's like a... He's like a very competent purse thief. Like, he could... Yeah. He, That's like, the whole thing. 
Yeah. Okay. So like if he's like inside a warehouse or something, I think he's he's much more limited. But if he's like out on the street, it runs by, yeah. grabs a woman's purse and just slides like for 15 blocks. Like yeah, he, he's doing well. Or he has like a like a sewer grate open somewhere that he slips into and he's just gone. Right. That works. That makes <laughs> sense. That being said, the ninja midlife crisis is takes him so far down past the spinner. Oh, shit. Does Steve, Steve so, just said his house lost power. Oh, I think we lost him. Did we lose Steve? We did lose Steve. Uh oh, Uh-oh. OK. That's it for today. Thank you to everyone for listening. Please review us in whatever you're listening to us on. It doesn't have to be a good review. Any review is fine. If you're not sure what to say, just find a way to type out. <laughs> this is going to be the one time people actually leave reviews. It's just going to be a bunch of views and R's. <laughs> do it. Do it. Live your best life. Please do it. Remember. Remember. Fucking hang on. Hang on. I need the best. I need the dumbest one from the this bit. Oh, fucker. Pennies. Pennies. Remember. Pennies. <laughs> Pennies. <laughs> Pennies. Oh, God. They're both Batman villains. Ugh. Oh, no. Oh, Batman. Why are you winning so bad at this? I know. It's not fair. All right. Until All next right. time. Night, everybody. <laughs>